Uh, like I was saying, my name is William, and uh, this is uh, one weird trick you can use to hide a message in your x86 program. Um, so first, uh, let's talk briefly about steganography. Um, steganography is the, heart, the art of hiding data within data. Uh, it comes from these two Greek words, uh, and I like to think of it personally as cryptography's uh, less formal and uh, less useful sibling in most cases. Um, it does have a few limited cases uh, uses in the form of covert channels and secret metadata. You often uh, one famous use of it was actually in an MMORPG to hide uh, secret messages to find secret servers being uh, run uh, by unauthorized users, uh, and also you see it being used for fun by uh, CDF players. Uh, but in general, it's sort of less less useful than uh, the more uh, formal domain of cryptography. Um, However, uh, to get briefly into it, the theory of operation behind almost all uh, steganographic techniques is you take some, some uh, input format uh, whose contents can plausibly vary very slightly uh, and encode secret messages within those variations. Uh, a good example of this is the RGB 24-bit color space. Uh, these two colors below are uh, nearly identical. They're one bit off. Uh, and human beings can't tell the difference, but computers certainly can. So if we take an input file that's encoded using the 24-bit RGB color space, and we tweak these values very slightly, we can use those tweaked bits to hide a message that only other people in the know can, can decode. Um, and uh, this talk isn't going to be about uh, Steg using run-of-the-mill formats like images, video, audio, or text files, but just for motivation, uh, in this case, uh, these two commands below hide and extract a picture of DB Cooper from this picture of Bigfoot. Uh, and here's that file. I'll, I'll upload the slides later, and you can actually try this for yourself. But this file actually has another image hidden within it. And obviously, you wouldn't be able to know this unless you wouldn't be able to extract it unless you knew ahead of time that it was encoded using Steghide, which is a publicly available tool you can install uh, from Ubuntu or any other uh, Linux distro. Um, so let's talk about Steg on computer programs. Uh, so first, we have to ask, you know, what, what would it look like to actually Steg a compiled binary? Uh, unlike the formats that I talked about before, you know, image media, uh, image formats, uh, video formats, audio formats, uh, you can't do small uh, changes, small perturbations to to computer programs. Small changes to computer programs produce significant significant behavioral changes. Flipping a single bit willy nilly means uh, changing an add into a sub or changing uh, your your operands drastically in ways that that fundamentally break the correctness of the program. Um, transformations also have to preserve environmental assumptions, like binary relocations, relative addressing, and offsets within the compiled binary, uh, because these 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 environmental assumptions are made when loading the binary, uh, when when executing it, or when loading it into another binary, or anything else of that sort. Uh, so we can't just go around changing things willy nilly the way we can for for an image file. Um, so to understand how we're going to do this, we have to talk a little bit about x eighty six sixty four. Um, a key thing to understand about x86-64 is that it's a massive and ancient <laughs> um, ISA. Uh, you can trace its lineage all the way back to 1972 with the 8008. Um, and it's basically been stable with the exception of a bunch of extensions since 2003 with the AMD 64, 64-bit extension to the original architecture. Um, it's known as a CISC architecture, which means it's complex instead of RISC, which is reduced. Uh, and one of its relatively unique features is, is that it has a variable length encoding up to 15 bytes. Um, it's also a register memory architecture. Uh, which means that uh, its operations can actually take either register or memory operands in contrast to a load store architecture, which can only take uh, register operands for most operations and they're separate operations that load values into registers. Um, and these these last two points make x86 a very, very different ISA conceptually and in terms of encoding from RISC or even just relatively simple architectures like ARM, MIPS, RISC-V. Um, even, even other CISC architectures are not nearly as complicated as, as x86 is. Um, so to get into things, here's here's a, uh, a visualization of x86's instruction format. This is this is an approx an over approximation of x86's format, but it gives you uh, an idea of sort of the complexity we're dealing with. Uh, and for the purposes of this technique, we're only going to look at exactly two of these bytes. We're going to look at the opcode byte and the moder m byte. Um, I'll talk a little bit about those in a moment. Um, so to understand what these bytes do, you have to understand that. Uh, uh, x86 has a whole lot of different ways to encode operands. Uh, and one of the ways it does that is the moder m byte. Uh, the moder m byte encodes uh, two different kinds of operand, uh, or rather three different kinds of, of operand techniques. It encodes register to register operations, register to memory operations, and memory to register operations. So you see those three above. You can do, you know, add two registers together, uh, add a register and a memory location into a register, or add a register and a memory location into the memory location. Uh, the way that the moder m byte encodes those is with this mode selector, followed by a register selector, followed by a register or memory selector, depending on the, the value of mode. 64-bit um, x86 complicates this a little bit by adding the rex r and rex b uh, bits, but the essential mode of operation is the same. Um, so uh, a key thing that I that I, I kind of glazed over there intentionally is that uh, moder moder m reg and moder m rm uh, encode four possible states. 
and yet there are only three encoding forms. Um, and so, 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 you know, what's going on here? And the answer is, if we go back one, uh, the operand order that you see here of EAX, EBX, or EAX, EBX with EBX being a register operand, uh, rather a memory operand, uh, that order is controlled by the operand uh, uh, opcode uh, direction bit. So there's another bit inside of that, you know, uh, opcode byte that I mentioned earlier that controls the direction of these operands. So there's actually four possible states, but only three encoding forms. And what that means is there's actually two different ways to encode register register operands using the modern byte in x86. Uh, this isn't really documented anywhere, but it's sort of an it's a, it's a logical consequence of how the modern byte works with the direction bit inside of the opcode. Uh, so you know this is this is exactly that. If you actually look at x86's uh, you know uh, opcode tables, these ones are from the Intel software development manual. You'll see that there are two different or at least two different variants for many opcodes that have a mod RMR variant and a, 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 or sorry, an add RMR or an add RRM variant. These two have identical semantics when they're used in register register mode, but they have different semantics based on the direction bit when they're used in register memory or memory register mode. Uh, so what you'll see here is you have, you have, you have two uh, encodings that have the same length, right? They have, uh, they're both uh, 0, 1, 0, 3, followed by the modern M byte for the actual uh, operating encoding. So they're both two bytes long. Uh, they have identical semantics, so they're both add. They both have the same flags operations. They have the same timing behavior, et cetera. Uh, but we can select between them for one bit of second graphic information. So every time we see uh, an instruction that looks like this in a program, we can encode one bit of information by, 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 twi by twiddling uh, that encoding. So uh, the cool thing about this is this actually works for more than just add. It works for a key subset of x86 instructions. It works for add, add carry, sub, sub borrow, and XOR, XOR, and or XOR, mob, and comp, uh, all of which, fortunately for us, except for add, carry, and sub borrow, are extremely common in x86 binaries. And even though I mentioned that it's a little bit different in x 64 this all still works in 64-bit code because the, the basic operation of the modern byte is still preserved, even with the rex prefix. So we can actually use this on like a, a massive swath of x 86s encoded operand space, at least for, for, common, for common binaries. Um, so to put this all together, we're going to take our secret message and we're going to code into a secret bit string. Uh, we're then going to take our target program and pass it through an x86 instruction decoder to get our decoded semantics. We're going to iterate through each of those, and then we're going to rewrite them to match the secret bit string. So we'll select one or the other based on which bit in the bit string uh, we want to encode. Finally, we'll write that out as our new fully functional executable that contains our secret message. Um, I'll quickly walk through the code for this. Uh, like I said, there's there's you know a whole bunch of operations we can use. Add is shown below. Uh, there's four possible variants. This isn't exactly how it works at the assembler at the, at the binary level, but this is how the disassembler sees things. Um, in order to understand how much information we can actually pack in, we have to profile the binary. So that's what we're doing here. Uh, we're basically just uh, moving through every uh, instruction in the program and checking whether it's in our supported opcodes, whether it's a register register operation, since that's the only kind we can flip, and then we save it if it is. Um, and then finally, to actually do our rewrite, uh, we're going to select a new code, uh, which is uh, you know either that add zero one or add zero three variant, based on whether or not we need to encode a particular bit of information. So in one case, we're already correctly encoded. In the other two cases, we just have to swap um, based on you know the pairs we had earlier. Um, and then we just uh, take that new code. We take our, our, our operand registers as before, or rather our register operands as before, uh, and we use our encoder to create produce a brand new instruction that we splice directly into our copy of the uh, program's instruction text. And uh, that's that. Um, so I'm, I'm going to drop this slide really quickly because I'm going to do a live demo of this. And if everything goes right, hopefully this, this screen is shared and everybody can see this. Um, so what I have here on the right-hand side is a picture of Bugs Bunny and Stalin. Um, I've already loaded these commands here. You can see that uh, I have a copy of Wireshark installed at user bin, has this checksum, uh, bugs has this checksum. And you can see that I've profiled this binary already and it has about 23 kilobytes of space available. So if everything goes right, uh, what I'll be able to do is this. I'll be able to do, and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna save it into my own copy of Wireshark and I'm gonna load bugs into it. Now, uh, I have a copy of Wireshark here that is, you'll notice, uh, different in terms of its checksum from the initial one. These two, you know, differ. But if I run it, I have to... I apologize for the loud keyboard. <laughs> You'll notice it is a perfectly functional version of Wireshark. Um, I can move around a little bit, but I want to be fast. Uh, anyways, if I do stick 86 extract Wireshark, and I pump this into yeah, you will see that I, in fact, have a hidden copy of bugs inside of this, this, this binary. And if I do into SHA sum, you will see, oh, I don't have history. Uh, 
that this checksum matches our initial input. So there you have it. That is a way to hide a, bin a message inside of an arbitrary binary without breaking it uh, using this, this one weird trick inside of x86's operating coding. Um, I hope you enjoyed my talk. Uh, if you did, um, I have, I'm going to put the uh, slides for it up in a moment, and the source is available on GitHub under Woodruff WSTIC86. And of course, uh, you can follow me and talk to me on the Bluebird site at uh, 8x5CLPW2. Uh, thank you. <laughs>